In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Excel to create CSV files for importing into D2L. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to create CSV files for importing three types of problems, true-false, multiple-choice, and long-answer. Why just true-false, multiple-choice, and long-answer? It's simple. Those are the only three I use. While I will not be covering any other types of CSV files, the techniques are so similar that once you understand these three, you can easily create any type of CSV file. Why will I be showing you how to create CSV files using Excel? After all, you can create them using any editor that can create text files. There are two reasons. First and foremost, Excel is extremely well suited for the purpose. It has native support for CSV files. That means you can ignore a lot of stuff that you would have to keep track of if you used an editor to create these files. Second, Excel does math. Since I teach quantitative courses, the ability to use the power of Excel to perform calculations is a major benefit to me. Of course, if the courses you teach are not quantitative, this will not matter to you. As useful as Excel is, there are three things you need to be very cautious of while using Excel. The first is that saving an Excel file as a CSV file does not save everything. Anything that cannot be saved as part of a text file is discarded. That means the saved file does not contain any calculations you include in the worksheet, any text formatting you used, or any worksheet formatting you might have used. Specifically, all of the calculations are converted to the resulting answers, and all formatting is simply discarded. The second is that saving an Excel file as a CSV file only saves the current tab. The worksheet on the screen has three tabs, Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. Sheet 1 is the current tab, and it would be the only one saved in a CSV file. We will return to these two items in a moment. Third has to do with the slash key. Many of the cells need to start with a slash character, but if you press the slash key in an empty cell, you get these black numbers and letters beside ribbon items. This is a holdover from earlier days when Excel needed to be compatible with the DOS program Lotus 123. Lotus used the slash key to bring up its menu. The solution is simple. Anytime you need to start a cell with a slash character, just press a single quote key first. This tells Excel you are entering a label and the slash key will not bring up the menu. The single quote is not actually entered into the cell by Excel. As discussed a moment ago, saving an Excel file as a CSV file strips out formulas, formatting, and everything but the current tab. If you are not careful, this can cause you to lose valuable information. To make matters worse, when you save the file it will look like nothing changed. All your formatting and calculations will be in memory. You will still see multiple tabs if your worksheet had them. In fact, the file you are working with will look exactly like it did before you saved it. What happens is that Excel filters the data going into the CSV file on the hard drive, only allowing CSV appropriate data to be written to the file. If you are creating a CSV file for importing only, I do not need to keep formatting multiple tabs or calculations, this is not a problem. However, for others there is a simple solution. As you are building the file, save it as a normal Excel file. Once you are done, save the Excel file once more and then save the file as a CSV file. While the additional information will be stripped from the CSV file, it will remain in the Excel version. Before we get to the meat, let me strongly encourage you to think about creating templates. I have one Excel file for each type of question. I entered one question and imported it into D2L to make sure everything worked. I then erased the words that were specific to the question, leaving just the CSV framework. I then made 100 copies of that framework. Now, anytime I want to import more questions, I make a copy of the template and just enter the questions. With the template, I don't have to remember any CSV at all. I'm going to show you how to build the CSV framework for our three types of questions in this tutorial. There are things like comments and other extras that you can include. It has been my experience that almost no one uses these, so I'll not be covering many of them. The screen shows an Excel file with some comments and one true-false question. Cells A1 to A3 contain comments. Any cell that is started with two slashes is completely ignored by D2L. While these appear to go all the way out to the E column, the comments are all entered in cells A1, A2, and A3. Cell A5 contains the text, new question, without a space between the two words. It must be entered exactly like this. Cell B5 contains TF, short for true false, and nothing else. Please note that this text is in B5 and not a continuation of the text in cell A5. Cell A6 contains the title and nothing else. Cell B6 is currently empty. This is where you would enter the title for this question. Given that D2L generally only displays the title, 
I would strongly encourage you to make it a descriptive title. Cell A7 contains the text, question text, as all one word. The cell B7 is currently empty. This is where you would enter the text of the question. All of the question must be entered in cell B7. It cannot be split across to other cells. Excel allows for a cell to contain 32,767 characters of text, so long questions should not be an issue. The cell A8 contains the word points. The cell B8 currently contains a value of one point. You can change this to any value you wish. Since D2L handles points in the question library inconsistently, I almost always leave a value of one here. The points can easily be set in any test where you use the question. Cell A9 contains the word difficulty and cell B9 contains a difficulty level of 1. D2L also handles difficulty inconsistently so I typically leave the value at 1. Cell A10 contains the word true and cell A11 contains the word false. These are always used for true-false questions. These words are logical operators in Excel so you can sometimes have problems entering them into cells. If that happens, just start with a single quote as you did with the slash character. Finally, cell B18 currently contains the number 100 and cell B19 contains a number 0. You put a 100 beside the correct answer and a 0 beside the incorrect answer. No other numbers should be used. The screen shows an Excel file with some comments and one multiple choice question. The comments are different, but they are entered the same way. The new question in cell A5 is the same, but the type in cell B5 is now MC, short for multiple choice. Here, we see the word title in A6 and a title entered in B6, just as before. Here, the word question text, as one word, is entered in cell A7, and the actual text of the question would be entered beside it in cell B7. Cells A8 through B9 have the terms point and difficulty, as well as their value. These function identically to true-false questions. Now, we get to the part that is different from true-false questions. Cells A10 to A14 all contain the word option. A10 corresponds to the A answer for the multiple choice question. A11 corresponds to the B answer, and so on. You are not limited to five. You can have as few as two, or as many as you like, just by changing the number of options rows. If you had seven rows of options, for example, D2L would automatically create a question with answers A to G when you imported the question. Cells B10 to B14 currently contain zero. When you write the question, you would change the one with the correct answer to 100. You must have a completely correct answer. If you want to give partial credit for another answer, just enter a value between 1 and 99 in that answer's B cell. If you enter 50, for example, a student selecting that answer would receive 50% of the credit for the question. This type of question in D2L can only have one correct answer and will allow the student to select one answer. That means you cannot tell the student to check all that apply. That type of question is called a multiple selection question. I do not use them, but it is easy to modify the multiple choice template. First, you need to change the question type in cell B8 in this example from MC to MS. Second, instead of 100, you place a 1 beside each answer. If there are two correct answers, each would be worth 50%. Three and each is worth 33.3% and so on. You cannot have different partially correct answers count different amounts. Returning to our multiple choice example, you enter the answer text in cell C10 to C14. C10 corresponds to A, C11 to B, and so on. While I typically do not use it, you can enter feedback for the answers. To do so, skip column D and enter the feedback for the A answer in cell E10, the feedback for the B answer in cell E11, and so on. This works for any type of question that allows feedback. And no, I have no idea why you skip a column. I've given a number of cell addresses in this video. Keep in mind that these are relative. You could have a hundred or more CSV frameworks in a single Excel file. As you move down the page, the cell numbers naturally change. For the next example, I will leave in more comments and show two questions so you can see this. The screen shows an Excel file with some comments and two long answer questions. This type of question gives the student a question and a box for entering their answer. This time, there are comments down to row 6. It is fine that there's a blank line in the comments. Blank lines mean nothing in a CSV file. This time, there's the word new question in cells A8 and A15 and question type LA, short for long answer, in cells B8 and B15. The words title, question text, points and difficulty are in cells A9 to A12 and A16 to A19. Their values are in cells B9 to B12 
and to B16 to B19. This is exactly like the true false and multiple choice questions. Long answer questions have to be graded manually by the instructor. To facilitate that, you can enter the correct answer. To do that, we have the word answer key, all one word, in cells A13 and A20. The correct answers would be entered in cells B13 and B20. The questions are imported in the same order as they are in the CSV file. This can be useful if you want to have the questions in a specific order in your exam, especially if you import the questions into a new section. I have shown each type of question in a separate file. That is how I tend to manage my questions. It is especially easy for me since I have a separate template for each question type. However, this is not required. You can mix and match within a single CSV file as much as you like. You can, for example, have two true-false questions followed by a multiple-choice question, followed by two more true-false questions, and ending with a long-answer question. Keep in mind that D2L imports all the good questions but skips any questions with CSV mistakes. To avoid any problems, I always import into a new section. That way, if there's a problem, I can delete that section, fix the mistakes, and start over. That allows me to keep all the questions in order and allows me to maintain just one CSV file. When you go to save your CSV file, keep in mind the limitations we discussed at the start of this video. If there are any formatting or calculations you wish to save, or if you used multiple tabs, then be sure to save an Excel version as well as a CSV version. Finally, once you're ready to import your CS file into D2L, I have a separate video on this channel that shows you how to do that. If you found this tutorial useful, I have two MOOCs on Udemy.com that may interest you. The first is called Creating Exciting Videos Using PowerPoint Slides. It will show you how to take your classroom PowerPoint slides and turn them into videos with narration that you can use for your online courses. If you teach operations management or a related course, then your students will definitely be interested in my Working Operations Management Problems course. It has over eight hours of tutorials giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to work every type of problem that is typically covered in operations management.